part four, how does Medicare coordinate with other types of coverage for individuals who are under age 65? Essentially what I want to cover in this section here is who is expected to pay first. So we want to ensure the proper payment order for individuals under 65. Um, someone who gets this correct up front will save themselves a great deal of hassle over the long run. So an individual should provide Medicare initially with all types of coverage information when they fill out their initial enrollment questionnaire. If health coverage changes thereafter, an individual should tell Medicare, their doctors and their providers, you want to make sure uh, for the individual that the paperwork has the best chance of being filed properly and therefore being paid properly and timely. Um, the individual should confirm this information about the various types of coverage with the Benefits Coordination and Recovery Center. And I've, I've noted the, the telephone number here on the slide. Um, but just a comment, uh, I do want to make a comment on conditional payments as it relates to Medicare. So Medicare may make a conditional payment even when it doesn't pay first. I'm going to give you an example. Um, when a person needs medical care and um, is waiting sometimes years, uh, for example, for a workers' compensation claim to settle, Medicare may pay that in a timely manner, but then expects reimbursement when the workers' compensation settlement happens. So there's a process by which um, Medicare does coordinate with uh, some of the other programs to, to in essence, um, make sure that the, the providers are getting paid. So we'll look a little bit more about the workers' compensation and those other programs. So who pays first for individuals under age 65? Um, we'll talk about it generally and then also look at the circumstances that exist under the COBRA plans, um, end-stage renal disease, what happens in those cases on who pays first and others, including um, accident victims that have no fault or liability insurance, workers' compensation recipients, veterans, um, TRICARE members, and people that are assisted under the Federal Black Lung Program, people that are participants in that program. So generally, who pays first? Those who are entitled to Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare will pay first. Medicaid will pay second. If a person is disabled and is covered by a large group health plan, um, a large group health plan is defined as um, over 100 employees, and, um, and that individual's um, large group health plan is based on current employment from a family member, for instance, then the large group health plan pays first, Medicare second. And I will note for you that um, uh, under regular Medicare, the, 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 the employee plan that pays first would typically be some, uh, a plan where there's 20 or more employees. So the distinction with someone who is receiving disability benefits and under age 65 is that the group health plan must, in, in, for the, the first payer position, must have more than 100 employees. But if a person is disabled and is covered by a group health plan um, that is equal to or less than 100 employees, then Medicare will pay first and the group health plan second. So the trigger is for people that do are insured under large health plans or under health group health plans, the trigger is over 100 employees for that health plan to pay first. So under COBRA and end-stage renal disease, if someone is disabled and is covered by COBRA, Medicare pays first and COBRA pays second. Uh, with end-stage renal disease uh, and a group health plan and or, I'm sorry, or COBRA, um, the first 30 months of eligibility for Medicare are paid for by the group, I'm sorry, are, yeah, <laughs> eligibility for Medicare are paid for by the group health plan or COBRA, and then Medicare will pay second. Um, 
in the, in the after 30 months of eligibility for Medicare, Medicare pays first, and the group health plan or COBRA then pays second. So then I just want to run through some situ other situations um, where we want to look at who is paying first. So if there's a, um, an act, a person who's in an accident and they are covered through no fault or liability insurance, the insurance will pay first for services that are related to the accident. Um, and Medicare pays second for services that are related to the accident. However, if, for instance, um, there's, there's a person is disabled, they're an accident victim, um, but they have an issue that is unrelated to the reason that they had an accident, then Medicare will pay first for non-accident related services. Um, we see generally the same thing with an individual who has a workers' compensation illness or injury. Workers' compensation will pay first for the services that are related to the workers' compensation claim, and Medicare pays second. Again, however, Medicare will pay first, um, and Medicare will actually, Medicare will pay, workers' compensation won't pay at all. So that's a little bit of a misnomer there, um, and we'll correct that. Um, but so Medicare will pay for the non-claim related services. Um, a veteran with veterans benefits, uh, there is a coordination process that happens. So there is VA authorized coverage that will coordinate with Medicare coverage. So that there is um, kind of a weaving together between the two, but uh, neither pays twice. Um, and then there's TRICARE. Uh, under TRICARE, Military hospitals and federal providers will pay, uh, TRICARE will pay for, for um, services in military hospitals and federal providers. Medicare pays for everything else. And then under the Federal Black Lung Benefit Program um, for related services, again, the Federal Black Lung Program will pay first and Medicare second. So I do want to give you a note of caution about COBRA. We get quite a few calls here at the Center for Medicare Advocacy about confusion about people um, who elect COBRA instead of um, uh, Part B Medicare. So I just want to caution you that when an individual loses employer coverage and has Medicare, he or she should be aware of the time frames of the following. Um, and, and it's just, it's a matter of information to know the COBRA election period the Part B enrollment period, and also the Medigap open enrollment period. These may all have different deadlines, and they may overlap. And what an individual decides about one type of coverage, COBRA, Part B, or Medigap, may cause them to lose rights under other types of coverage. So it's, it's very important, hopefully, um, and, and before, before it's too late um, to know what those time frames and those election periods look like.